what I've got in this bag here are these little uh, video balance and what these are used for is if you have a camera like set in, you know in some like remote location instead of running separate coax and power lines to the camera what you could do is you could use a piece of cat5 like I've done here this is just a regular piece of just cat5 e you can use a couple pairs to run your power over to the side where the camera is going to be and then you would just hook up one of the other pairs like that to run to the other side where you would have another ballon and then that can go to your video capture device you know like a DVR or whatever or a display and you can watch what this uh, board over here is doing keep an eye on this board make sure it's not going to do some bad stuff this just makes it easier to run your cable because cap 5 cable or you know just like networking cable like this in general is like really cheap compared to having something like dedicated you know some sort of coaxial uh, wire running here so what i wanted to do today is i ordered these it was a pack of 10 i think i paid like less than eight bucks for all these and i wanted to open one up see what was inside of it and see if it's actually got you know some passive circuitry in there that takes the video signal and actually converts it into a like a balance line you know this would be kind of like what you would use for you know something similar with like an xlr you know and then an unbalanced jack <laughs> let's see if it's not that they just took these wires and made them come out to these to this connector here or if they actually put something inside of the thing okay so you can see it's just a tiny little box Video Ballon, yeah. We got our connector right there, our clamp downs. And then on the opposite side, we just have a BNC connector. Uh, these BNC connectors are really not the best quality, but I mean, it, it works as you can see, this, this one is working here. So it looks like this one's already kind of separating right there. If I can get a blade in there, maybe I can just pop it open. Oh, it's already popping open. That wasn't too bad. Okay. So it's almost off. Looks like we might actually have a little circuit board in there. So what I'm expecting to see is just some passive components, you know, maybe some sort of an inductor or some sort of inductors and or like a little transformer, probably some maybe capacitors. I wouldn't really expect to see like any transistors or anything and, you know, maybe resistor or something, but what I'm really hoping to not see is just these wires going straight through to the connector. And we see we might have some little component in there. So it looks uh, sort of okay-ish so far. And oh yeah, we do. There's a little toroidal transformer right there in the center. And on the opposite side, we see we've got a couple of resistors. And the value on those can't tell if it's 512 or 215 we'll look at it up closer but uh, I mean we could actually even do the a little schematic for this thing this is all we got inside of this thing so we have our BNC we have the center pin of that coming into here and it goes straight into this little toroid and it's only one wire going straight in there and on the opposite side it comes out and it goes to the positive side of the connector on the grounded side of the BNC. We can see that part of it goes into the, the same little transformer and on the opposite side here it comes out to the to the negative post of the screw terminals there. But it also goes through a couple of resistors. One of the resistors goes straight to the other side of the, the toroid right there of that winding and then it also has a resistor that goes to the positive screw terminals. So very simple little thing. That was it. Just really wanted to take a look inside of it and make sure that it was actually a device that was going to function, you know, as intended and not some bamboozle where it's just wires going from one side straight out to the other. And I'm glad there was actually some components in here. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys around the bench. I got these BNC to RCA connectors so I could connect stuff to like BNC is easier. What I was really hoping to find was a BNC to a female RCA but I couldn't really find any, at least not like any cheap ones. And I was just kind of looking for something cheap because it's not like I need to use this stuff all the time. I just wanted to make it a little cleaner so I didn't have to have like a bunch of funky adapters. But I mean, it's kind of what I still sort of ended up with, but that's not a big deal. <laughs> but these connectors are like some of the crappiest things I've ever seen. Uh, they're, I mean, it, they, they do the job. I'm not going to say that they don't, but like these little slits here that are that are cut to kind of provide the, the contacts for the RCA, like 
it just, the metal just feels like it's super brittle. Some of these slits are like kind of cut at an angle. Like if you were to squeeze these in to try to make a little bit better contact on the ground of the RCA that you're connecting it to, it just feels like it's going to break. Yeah, not exactly the best thing on the planet, but I'm not exactly complaining just because they were like really dirt cheap and I had a bag of them somewhere around here and I just uh, can't find it now. So, but yeah, that's a, uh, just thought I would show that.